guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. Today, I'm bringing you in the hospital. It is so cold. Let's get inside. So this is actually only the second time I've been at this hospital as an internal medicine attending. It all still feels very new. You kind of feel like the new kid at school. And uh, the medicine is the same, but I'm still trying to figure out how things work. So a little bit excited, a little bit nervous. <laughs> the first step is figuring out how many patients were admitted to me last night from the emergency department. So let's head to the computer and find out. That actually reminds me of a question that I read a few days ago from one of you guys in the comment section, um, asking why do I see patients in the emergency department when there are eMERGE docs? So basically when patients come to the hospital, the emergency physician sees them, does the initial investigations, treatments, and then has to decide, does this patient have to come into the hospital or are they safe enough to go home? And if they're coming into hospital, they have to then call the right doctor, either surgery or psychiatry, or in my case, internal medicine. So then the internal medicine doctor who's on call will see them, admit them under me because I'm taking care of the patients during the day this week. Okay, so it looks like I've got three new patients. Um, the first one came in with syncope, so they fainted. The second one was actively having a heart attack. And the third came in with sepsis, so they had low blood pressure and fever. All right, let's go see how they're doing. I'm going to see the patient to hear the whole story from her and her daughter. Because when it comes to fainting, you learn a lot from the details of a story. What was she doing right before it happened? How long was she unconscious? And did she feel normal when she woke up? Found a quiet room where I can actually write my note. I find in the emergency department, it's so busy, so much beeping and buzzing that it's really hard to focus. Um, but I found this room and check out this amazing diagram. And so you can kind of get a sense of the emergency department, how it's laid out and how big it is. Okay, so what I've learned is that this woman has had multiple episodes of syncope where she just fainted with no warning at all. The first time she was with her husband, they were watching TV and she just slumped over. The next time it happened when she was a passenger in a car, thank goodness she wasn't driving herself. And then most recently it happened and her daughter saw it, she was really worried and insisted that her mom come to the emergency department, which is definitely the right call. You know what, it is so echoey in here that I might just try to find a different room for us to keep talking. And the next patient, the patient with sepsis has already gone upstairs, so we might as well get moving. Okay, so where were we? Syncope, usually a couple of different categories of potential causes. Um, it could be related to the heart, which is usually the most concerning. It could be a seizure, it could be orthostatic hypotension. So when you stand up and you get that head rush, or it could be vasovagal. So like you see blood and you faint. Actually, one of my best friends fainted in medical school in the operating room while they were operating. She was so embarrassed, ended up waking up on the ground. But in that case, she didn't have to go into hospital because she was fine afterwards and there was a very clear cause. What's different in the case of this patient is that it happens all of a sudden, no warning. She doesn't feel dizzy before. She didn't just stand up. She didn't see something. No warning is very concerning for a cardiac cause. Often that could be an arrhythmia. So the heart goes into some sort of different rhythm, either very slow or very fast. And because of the way the heart is contracting, you don't get enough blood going to the head. And so you can't remain conscious. Basically, my plan is to investigate each of these possible causes with the most concern put on the cardiac causes. So we're gonna actually have her hooked up to a cardiac monitor the whole time she's here, whether she's going to the bathroom or taking a shower. And it's weird to say, but I hope she faints while she's here because then we can see what's actually happening in her heart at that moment, because otherwise it's so hard to diagnose. If I haven't answered before I'm publishing this video, I'll let you know at the end of this video. On to the next new patient, the septic one who came in last night. So sepsis is a condition where the body has an extreme reaction to an infection and it can lead to organs shutting down and it can even be life-threatening. So the key is recognizing it early and giving antibiotics and lots of IV fluids right away. Hey, I was just actually looking for you. I got this uh, septic patient from Emerge and he's uh, really struggling to breathe and he's having like a lot of coarse crackles. Um, I don't know if you want to come take a look at him. Yeah, absolutely. I walk into the room and I see a man sitting upright in bed. I can hear crackles at the bases of his lungs. He has swollen legs and his neck veins are quite distended. Okay, I totally agree with you. I think this is all volume overload, lots of IV fluids in eMERGE, but I just wanna make sure we're not missing anything. So I'm thinking 
chest x-ray, get an ECG, some blood work, and then go from there. Okay, and maybe do some IV Lasix if everything is good. Afterwards. I totally agree. Yeah, I think that's the next step. Awesome. Perfect. Thank okay, you. thank you. The results are back. It's amazing how quickly things move when you put stat on the order. So we've got the chest x-ray results, and I can see exactly what we expected. There's fluid around the lungs, plus you can see that the blood vessels running through the lungs are more prominent, they're bigger than they should be, which also shows they're filled up with fluid. Okay, and everything else, the ECG troponin looks good. He's not having a heart attack. Um, so at this point, we need to give him a strong diuretic called Lasix through the IV to get him peeing out that extra fluid and get him breathing better. But the one thing is that I didn't really expect that a couple of liters of fluid that the emergency department gave, I didn't expect that to cause this amount of fluid in the lungs. So it kind of makes me wonder if this patient has some underlying heart disease so that it's not pumping efficiently, causing a backup into the lungs. So I'm gonna do some extra tests, do an echocardiogram, see how the heart is functioning in case there's some underlying heart disease we didn't know about. Okay, so it turns out the third new patient is actually in the cath lab right now, getting the ultimate treatment for a heart attack. So now I can see my follow-up patients and I know them well because I saw them yesterday and the day before. So that's always a little bit faster. You know, I feel like we've all wanting to just like move on from COVID but there's still COVID patients that we're seeing in the hospital. And, you know, I think this is just the new normal. Like you just get used to throwing on the PPE, heading in, <laughs> seeing patients. I think it's just normal for us now. Oh, hi, uh, can you please page GI to this number? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that'd be perfect. I'm wondering if you can assess the patient uh, for an ERCP. It's pretty much the only thing keeping her in hospital at this point. Perfect. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Hey, Siobhan, mind if I ask you a question? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so I have this patient in 308, and I just noticed this morning his potassium was a little bit low, and he's also been having some more frequent PVCs oh. than he was yesterday. I was just wondering if we'd be able to do some potassium replacement. Of course, sorry, which room was that again? 308. 308, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Thank awesome. you. Awesome, thank you. Okay guys, actually we're gonna go to the med room with Erin because they have a really cool system to take out meds that I want to show you. <laughs> okay, into the special med room. Ooh. Fingerprinting, very high tech. Pops out automatically. And there we go. Potassium to go. <laughs> Okay, time for a little snack slash lunch, banana, protein shake. I was hoping that Mark was gonna be able to come join us, but I just texted him and it looks like he is just swamped. Over 20 patients on his list and he got way more new patients than me overnight. So he's gonna be working hard, I can tell, till the end of the day. Uh, I can tell when his text messages get shorter and shorter. <laughs> Poor guy. It's funny because when we're filming, I want it to be a bit of a crazy day. I'm hoping that you're going to see something interesting. But at the same time, if it's too busy, like it's just impossible to film. So you kind of need this in between. So hopefully next, I don't know, maybe later this week or next week, Mark and I can film something together because we have a lot of fun doing it. Four or five more patients to see, something like that. And then I want to loop back around and see that septic patient one more time uh, just to make sure that he's breathing better. But. Guys, it's really fun to be vlogging again. I haven't done it in a while and I love sharing these days with you. <laughs> done seeing all my patients. You won't believe how many patients with rheumatological conditions like gravitate towards me. <laughs> I've got a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, another one with suspected lupus, Sjogren's, all on a list for internal medicine. Like these aren't even, it's not even my rheumatology practice. So <laughs> um, I like it. I like that I can use my skills, you know? Okay, so now let's find out if Mark is done. I have a feeling he won't be, but I think I know where he might be writing his notes. He's usually hiding on the other side. I knew it, there he is, hard at work. <laughs> oh, do you still have a lot to go? Uh, no, I'm staying here my last note actually. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. We actually get to have dinner. <laughs> Good timing. Okay, so it's the end of the week. So I wanted to give you an update about that patient who fainted. So we imaged her head, we imaged her heart, and everything looked normal. But she never fainted again while she was in hospital with us. 
So I'm gonna send her home with a Holter monitor, which records her heart rhythm. And she even has a little button that she can push if she faints or if she has any symptoms. So her cardiologist can then look really closely at those times. All right, that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And that way, I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now.